This is the Getsy Health Podcast with Janique and Tristan Roney. Hey, you guys, welcome back to the Getsy Health Podcast. This is our most hypocritical episode ever. To date. Probably. Yeah. We're Definitely. Talk- we're talking about, well, it's because we have little children. Is it? Is it? We're going to talk about that. Well, we have little children and a business. All right. So it's sleep. We're talking about sleep <laughs> we are. and it is 11.05 at night mm-hmm. and we're doing this. We podcast. should be sleeping and we we're should. doing this instead. I, in fact, drank caffeine at 7 p.m. because I knew we were recording tonight. Don't worry. I judged her to death do, for do it. Do not. <laughs> don't do. What is it? Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to sleep. Do as they say, not as I do. I will sleep when my kids are both in high school. So there you go. All right. And and you've probably said something similar to yourself when it comes to your sleep. <laughs> don't Listeners, make excuses. Don't, don't do what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Do better because we're going to try to do better. Actually, I am. I'm, I'm working on doing better. I you got, are. I got my little sleep tracking thing. We'll talk about that. What is it called? The aura, aura ring? ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those are so hot right now and trendy. It's so hot, especially Same. on me. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, so let's talk about sleep. Um, you've probably heard before that you need more of it. You've probably said before that you need more of it, especially at uh, seven in the morning when mm-hmm. you're waking up for the day. We're going to let you know exactly why you need it. It's going to be pretty cool. And you you won't even recognize that sleep affects your body in these ways. Right. So sleep is like the worst in America, probably in the world, but in America, like people are so bad at sleeping. Because we're so stressed. That's why. Right. Because our lifestyle is mm -hmm. toxic. Well, Okay, let's talk about that for a little bit. We totally glorify stress, right? Oh, yeah. You know, we revel we, in we it. We glorify we being busy. busy. Mm-hmm. I'm so busy. Oh, I have soccer practice and piano lessons. But not only that, but he, especially here in our American culture, like we we have very few holidays. We don't value family time very much. Our Our form of decompressing is watching TV, whereas in other countries, they go out, they... It, which country is it that they actually like close off in the middle of the day for everyone to take so naps? There, there's multiple, but Spain is kind of the one that's really known mm-hmm. for it. They do their afternoon siesta. Yeah. Like, doesn't that sound wonderful? And we're too busy, like being stuck in buildings, doing right. the grind thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the daily grind. You got to meet our numbers. I know. got to stay in the black. Yep. You know, our nine to five. And, um, and it's, and it's not good, you know, like we, we are so stressed and it starts from when school college, like, no, you know what's insane? Yeah. Teenagers today. I'm seeing 10 year olds in my clinic. I'm seeing 12 year olds in my clinic. I'm seeing 14 year olds in my clinic come in and they're like, I'm suffering with panic attacks. And I'm like, honey, why, why are you suffering with panic attacks? You're 12. Mm -hmm. Like your biggest issue right now should be, did that boy notice me today Mm -hmm. and not like sitting in your living room, having a panic attack just because you're eating breakfast. Right. You know, it's over. Not like, so our brains are wired and they're tired. Our bodies are wired and they're tired and it's getting worse. It is. Unfortunately it is. So So did, did, did you know, humans are the only mammals that willingly delay sleep. No, I didn't know that. Every other animal. I mean, Abby's on the couch right now asleep. <laughs> she, she, yep. Yeah. Like they get tired. They go to sleep. They sleep. There's no questions asked. That's just mm-hmm. what you do. Mm-hmm. But humans. Yeah. We friggin I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> You've so, said that before, huh? So let's talk about, some of the reasons why, like, let's talk about why we have such terrible sleep habits. What do they call it? Like sleep, sleep hygiene, hygiene. Why so, is, go yeah. ahead. No, 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 no. So, so hygiene refers to the, the habits around our sleep. Right. Mm-hmm. And we suck at them. We really do. And because of that, we don't get enough sleep. We don't get good quality sleep. And no. we'll talk about that because it's mm-hmm. not enough to just be in your bed. Yeah. Um, and, and we're miserable. Right. Mm -hmm. So what was your question? (laughs) So what is it that leads to such bad sleep? Some of the basics that I want to bring up is Mm -hmm. the lighting in your house. 
Like when, so we are completely, so our bodies, you guys respond to light. Yeah. Every single cell in your body has a light receptor that responds to its environment. So even though it doesn't have eyes, there is a chemical reaction happening that's telling your cells it's time to decompress. Mm -hmm. Now, when the sun goes down and back in the day when we didn't have electricity, Mm -hmm. our bodies responded to that. But now the sun goes down and the, the lights go on and we are blasting our living spaces with brightly lit lights instead of, um, dim, like dim lights or like one light there and one light here. Like when, when, especially in our house, when it's dark outside, we have like a lamp on or two Mm -hmm. and it's very dark in our house. And when people come in and they start putting lights on, we're like, um, can you switch that off please? we're all getting ready for bed. And they're like, but it's 5 30 PM. I'm like, I know <laughs> like we're, pre- we're prepping our bodies to sleep. You guys like you, and like screens go off. Like we, un- unless I'm working or something like right. there's like screen time has to go off. But what are we doing at night? We have lights on, mm-hmm. we have TVs on, mm-hmm. we're staring at cell phones. Mm-hmm. I personally think the reason why we have so many anxious teens, how often is their brain being stimulated by those blue lights, those blue lights that literally change brain chemistry, disrupt your HPA access, Mm -hmm. access, sorry. And which stimulates your adrenals to be in hyperdrive. So you got tons of like stress hormones circulating in your body. And guess what? It's 12 o'clock at night. Right. Another part of that, that chemical process is melatonin, right? Which is produced in the brain. And it, it is, there's evidence that it's suppressed by the uh, stimulation of blue light. And blue light is what is most commonly put off by our electronics. Now, uh, we've tried to replace that natural melatonin production with uh, synthetic melatonin supplements. I bet a lot of you listening to this have taken melatonin or are currently taking melatonin. Mm -hmm. turns out it doesn't really do the same thing. This is synthetic melatonin that you're taking as a supplement. Um, It's not working the same way as your natural melatonin production. So, And you don't want to mess with that hormone anyways. You don't want to mess really with any hormone hormone Mm -hmm. for the most part. So, um, So yeah, so the blue lights are a big factor, just light in general, because kind of going back to the evolutionary background of this, we didn't have electricity for most of human history, right? right. Artificial lighting wasn't really an option. We had candles and fire, Mm -hmm. basically lamps from Mm -hmm. gas. And uh, we weren't able to create a, basically a daytime setting once the sun went down. And since we developed that capability, we have totally changed our, our time span in which Mm -hmm. we're able to function. And for a long time, we have hailed that as a marvel of technological process progress, Mm -hmm. right? Like, wow, we're able to accomplish so much more because we can work through the night. Yeah. Woohoo. We've become slaves to work. That's all that's really happened. Totally. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and one of the biggest detriments of that process has been that we no longer sleep as much Mm -hmm. as we used to. Now um, let's, let's maybe talk about some of the effects of that. You probably are aware of how sleep affects you personally or the lack thereof. I'm not done talking about. Oh, oh, are we still? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, we're good. No, there's there's just one more thing that I want to bring up. So um, go back and listen to the podcast episode about EMFs guys. Like right. EMFs okay. are ginormous mm-hmm. when it, cause EMFs are, they're these frequencies that are constantly interacting with your cells. Your cells literally are like frequencies with the electron orbiting the, the protons. And then you have this other magnetic force interacting with that, that, um, that sphere mm-hmm. of energy going on. So when you, when your cells that are in their own orbit, doing their own thing in synchronicity, or I mean, your atoms are doing their thing and they're constantly being bombarded with magnetic frequencies, radio frequencies, um, all of this other, like from our cell phones, from our Wi-Fi's, from um, electricity, like when our body is, how many people sleep with their cell phone plugged in next to them? Um, next to their, their nightstand. Mm-hmm. Right. So many people even worse. This doesn't cover the EMFs, but they 
keep their phone alerts going. Right. And all night long, they get these bloop. Or buzzing. Ding, or, ding. Right. And, and that's interrupting their sleep. They may not mm-hmm. admit that it does, but I guarantee it's having an effect on you. Mm-hmm. Why? Why? Why are you doing that? Right. Commit yourself. <laughs> right. You know, like seriously, like don't plug your phone in next to you and put it on airplane mode. Yeah. So plug it in the kitchen, put it on airplane mode. Um, and then a lot of people say, well, I need an alarm. Well, your alarm can actually, a lot of people will know this. Your alarm will still work in airplane mode. <laughs> so charge it during the day sometime, right. have it fully charged and next to your nightstand, it right. will not use any battery life on airplane mode with the alarm clock on. Right. So you can still utilize that, but you guys, I cannot explain to you how massive of a radio frequency um, your cell phone emits when it's on when it's searching for a cell signal, it's, it's huge. And like with a healthy range, you want something like under 10, we're talking like hundreds of thousands. That's like the range that your cell is emitting as far as um, one of these gauges go. Mm. And so please listen to our podcast episode with Ryan. Um, I personally think it's technology that is causing us to break down on a, mental level because we don't even recognize that one it's that bl- that blue light screening that mm-hmm. we're staring at all day long mm-hmm. but then it's also the EMF that we are bomb- we're like we're radiating ourselves with mm-hmm. like you'll like people are so frustrated with me now but I'm sorry but my phone is on airplane mode now when I don't use it when I'm driving mm-hmm. you know I just download podcasts and I download movies at the shop when when we're in the office you know mm-hmm. cuz cuz we have really bad wifi here in the mountains but you know you guys like EMFs are causing a lot of damage that no one is putting voice to. And we need to understand that and create boundaries, switch off your Wi-Fi at night. No one's using it. Yeah. In fact, there might be one or two of you out there that are using it for like baby monitors and stuff, but Mm -hmm. get like a, get, um, don't they have like a walkie talkie kind of baby monitor? Yeah. I use as a, I think it's like a 2.5 gigahertz right. thing. So it's not much different than Wi-Fi. You know, so get something that you would have bought in the 90s. You know what I mean? Like go back to the 90s technology. That was when it was safest. Right. Okay, so sorry. I, I tend to fall more on the side of, I think the detriment of technology is more about psychologically what it does, mm-hmm. especially social media, right? Yeah. It's that constant reward system Mm -hmm. that's taking place where every like, every comment, every post is another little ding in your brain. And we get kind of addicted to that. And that makes it very difficult for us to put it down. Mm -hmm. And how many of you right now listening to this have deprived yourself of at least some sleep because you are on social media, right? Swiping through Instagram Mm -hmm. on the Snapchats, doing the tick, Talk, whatever the kids do these yeah. days, you kids and your TikTok. <laughs> um, and, and you're doing that instead of sleeping, right? And potentially hours every day of doing that instead of mm-hmm. sleeping. This is not productive time, folks, right. right? It is not nearly as productive as sleeping would be. But it's because your brain has been wired to be addicted to the social media. Mm-hmm. So, so get rid of it. I mean, cut it back, put some limits on it, mm-hmm. figure that stuff out but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, so those are some of the causes. Caffeine is another major cause, mm-hmm. right? How many people do what Janique did tonight and they have caffeine after 6 PM. Right. Goodness gracious folks. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that to yourself. What kind of people do that? <laughs> don't, don't. I mean, granted, like sometimes, sometimes, you know, you've got a long night ahead of you and that can be the uh-huh. perfect way to keep yourself going. Okay. There was another reason why I did it. It's because we're starting the gut restoration protocol tomorrow. And so I'm like, oh, it's my last coffee for a month. <laughs> so I'm saying goodbye. Right. So there you go. So so here's the thing though, is that if you are one of those people that is needing 300 milligrams of caffeine every single day to keep yourself functioning, it's a lot. It's having an effect on your sleep too. Mm-hmm. You may not believe it. It is. Guaranteed, especially yep. if you're getting a big chunk of that caffeine after about five or six o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so there's another factor. I mean, there's so, so, so many factors that go into this, but the fact is that 
people just don't value sleep enough. No. Right. It is just as important as nutrition. It is just as important as exercise. But how mm-hmm. many people out there really believe that, especially when it comes to yourself? Right. So take it seriously. It's a big problem. It's an epidemic in our country. It is costing our country probably billions of dollars a year mm-hmm. because of lost productivity. And it, uh, we need to address it. We need mm-hmm. to address it, which is why we're doing this episode. Yep. So uh, anything else you want to talk about with causes? Um, no. Okay. General stress, bad technology hygiene, light hygiene. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not prepping ourselves. Right. Basically. And, and, so and I would like to focus most of this episode on how to do better sleep anyway. Let's do it. So, um, and let's talk about like why we need sleep as well. Like well, we what don't, it does for our bodies. Honestly, we don't know. That's, that's the mystery of sleep. They've got theories about what happens when we sleep and therefore why it's beneficial. Well, we know that 80% of our healing and repairing happens when we're sleeping. Yeah. But is it because we're sleeping? We don't know. So, I I mean, we we just know that if you don't do it, bad things happen to you, right? You don't heal. We we aren't aware of the underlying mechanisms that Mm -hmm. go into all of this, but yes, there is a ton of healing that happens when we sleep. Right. There is something that has to do with spindle fibers in our brains. Mm -hmm. Um, Your brain, by the way, does not rest when you sleep. Your brain does not go into hibernation mode. It is very, very active, but it's a very specific kind of activity. Mm -hmm. And it's basically uh, consolidating memories so that they can be retrieved more easily in the future, which is one reason why sleep deprivation makes you so forgetful. You never had that, that... memory consolidation process going. It also helps your brain. There's some recent research. So that's why there's, it's mom brain because kids keep you awake all the time. There's so like many newborns, things that go into like, mom brain. Oh my brain. gosh. Yes. Yeah. But, but that just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's why I have mom brain all the time. Cause my kids are waking me up 10 times a night. This is something I wanted to say at the beginning and I keep forgetting this is not scientific by any means, but I've been told and I've really latched on to the idea that 90% of our health problems could be addressed by getting adequate sleep. Do you know who said that? Who? Wasn't it Dr. Jolene Brighton? Who? She's that hormone doctor. Who? You, you don't remember? Did we interview her? No, we oh, didn't. Okay. But we no. listened to one of her Whatever. lectures. But. I don't know who said it. I'm going to start taking credit for it personally no. soon. <laughs> I just so have to Tristan say it a few more times. One day. Yeah. As I always say. <laughs> but but she, she was much, I remember her giving a talk on hormones yeah. and saying like 90% oh, of our that's hormones right. yes, that is where I heard could it. be fixed if we were sleeping and eating well. I, I want to take it further. 90% of our health issues, 90% of our health issues could be resolved if we got enough sleep. You know why I feel safe saying this? Because I feel so confident nobody out there is going to test the theory Mm. because no one takes it seriously enough. But I do think it is that important to us and it is Mm -hmm. that potentially beneficial. Right. It's just so hard in our modern society to Mm -hmm. create the structure to make that happen. Right. So, um, so yeah, mom brain, Probably. Yeah. Yep. Memory issues, concentration issues you, for sure. If you have anything you need to heal up in your body, like autoimmune diseases, mm-hmm. gut issues, like right. anything, like you need sleep. So you need healing and repairing. So some recent research has even shown that during sleep, it's like our brains are detoxifying. I know there are people out there that just cringe every time they hear the word detox, detox. but <laughs> but the fact is that it is a thing that's happening mm-hmm. in our body and sleep is where our brain does a lot of that. Yeah. So if you are not getting enough sleep, you are not adequately giving yourself time to clear all the toxins out of your brain. Mm -hmm. You're giving yourself brain damage. Congratulations. Literally. Getting five hours of sleep or less makes you equivalent to a drunk driver on the road. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee probably 20% of the people on the road are doing that. And that's Mm -hmm. not okay. So much about this is not okay. So... Um, all right. So, uh, more stuff about sleep. Let's talk about the actual sleeping process. So we go through several phases of sleep. We've got, uh, essentially we've got light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep, which is when we dream. 
um, th- you could get more technical and there's, you know, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, but, yeah. but really it's, it's light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep. And we should be spending somewhere between 20 and 25% of our night in deep sleep and somewhere around the same 15 to 20, 25% of our, our night in REM sleep. But we're going to cycle in and out of this. So for the first half of the night, we spend a fair amount of time in deep sleep and we go into deep sleep for a while. Then we come out into light sleep and, and brief wakening. Then we go back into deep sleep And eventually that starts transitioning to spending more time in REM sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, toward the end of the night, right before we wake up, we're spending very large periods of time in REM sleep. And that is why we need a full seven to nine hours of sleep because we need to make sure there's adequate time to get the deep sleep in, which is super healing where a lot of Mm -hmm. that regeneration, rejuvenation takes place. But we also need plenty of time for the REM sleep, Mm -hmm. which is where that memory consolidation and basically the cognitive benefits probably take place. And if you cut that short, you are probably cutting short your REM sleep is my guess, um, which is going to have cognitive effects for you. There is research pointing to the fact that long-term Alzheimer's disease could be a direct result of sleep deprivation. I was actually just reading that. Oh, I beat you to it. You did. Tell me more. Punchline. No, give us, just give saying, us um, so from the Mayo Clinic, it says, although no research has shown a clear link between sleep deprivation and Alzheimer's, it is possible that impaired sleep over many years may put you at a higher risk for some forms of dementia, mm-hmm. including Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. And so Alzheimer's gets worse over time. Their sleep disturbances often get worse too. Mm-hmm. So it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it literally, like you said, it you don't sleep. You literally like have your brain on fire. Yeah. So you want to like, like we know that the body heals, like the brain heals itself too. Right. While you're yeah, it has to heal itself. So if you want to not have brain deterioration in your old age, you know, like protect your brain, like sleep. Right. You know what I mean? Just just prioritize it. That seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. So just do it, guys. Do it. <laughs> now, there are a lot of things that can interfere with your sleep quality. We've mm-hmm. talked about things that interfere with our quantity, but let's talk about quality. Children. So, so yes, the EMFs, <laughs> we covered that. Children, <laughs> ooh, pets, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was, okay, someone, someone sent us a meme and there was like, it was the half of it was leave all the tux, leave all the, the people that stress you out behind in 2019. <laughs> right. And then there's a picture of a rapper who was like, but what if those people are my children? <laughs> I was only, I can't, but but I how can't. am I going to leave my children yeah. behind in 2020? <laughs> yeah, or 2019. But I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, You guys, we really like our kids. Just, I think I should put that disclaimer out there. I know we joke about how much they stress us, but that's just because we're anxious parents. Right. We just want what's best for them and ourselves. So, so your sleep environment is super important to your sleep quality. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's too warm, you will not sleep well. If it's too cold, you will not sleep well. If there's too much noise in the room, you will not sleep well. I know people that sleep with a radio on, like they'll play wow. CDs. No, don't, don't, no. No, stop it. <laughs> um, or uh, people don't even necessarily do it intentionally, but they'll they'll sleep in a really noisy environment that just has all kinds of beeping and and things going on. Most people sleep with the TV in their room, and they'll fall yes, asleep they, they the fall TV. asleep with the TV mm-hmm. on. Um, so for really good sleep hygiene, guys, just don't put your TV in the room. Don't like, get it out of there. Create an. This is what we've stopped doing is creating associations. So let me let me bring to light a really obvious association. Let's say you need to go to the restroom, right? Mm. You've been holding for an hour Mm. and you're like, I can do this. I'm fine. Mm. You get up, you're fine. You're walking down the passageway. As soon as you touch that door handle to the bathroom, you got to go really bad. It's the association. Your body's like, oh, it's time to urinate. And then all of a sudden that urge went from a one to a 20, right? On a scale of one to 10. I wouldn't know about that because I never touch bathroom door handles. Well, you know what I mean? That's disgusting. It's it's like Pavlov's dog, right? (laughs) So same thing with the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Like when you create an association of this is what I do in here. I change my clothes and I sleep. 
And that's all I do. And they get freaky. Yes. Cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. How old are we? Um, <laughs> 13 for the rest of my life. Thank you. Um, like you got to create that association, but right. instead what are we doing in our society? We're going to the room and we're creating the association of, I watch TV here and I have fun. I'm on my phone. I'm on I'm the on TV. My, yes. Yep. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. busy. This is a busy room. It's mm-hmm. not a sleeping room. Right. So not to say that we have incredible sleep hygiene, but there's no TV in our room. Nope. Like we have a lamp and a bed and mm-hmm. a bookshelf. And we really, mm-hmm. the only thing we do in our room is sleep. Is sleep. That's mm-hmm. it. Yep. And th- yep. And other things too. And that we, you were talking about. Say it. Say it. No, I can't. Come on. I can't. Euphemism it. No. Okay. We <laughs> make right. sweet love to each Stop. other in our room sometimes. Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. children. Stop. All right. <laughs> so I am sorry you had to hear that. Oh my <laughs> gosh. So, but, but seriously, so the associations are so, so, so important. And if you have an association with anything other than sleeping in your room, you will have a hard time getting good quality sleep. Mm-hmm. It's problematic. Yep. Um, so that is all stuff you really need to consider. If you have a whole bunch of lights in your room, even if they're not bright lights, if mm-hmm. they stay on at night, uh-uh. yeah. that's going to interfere with your natural sleep processes with that chemical process that Jeanique was talking about. And you're not going to get good quality sleep. So you've got to get rid of that. So basically you need to turn your bedroom into your sleeping sanctuary. Totally. If you're a student in a dorm room or you have a studio apartment, I'm sorry. I'm really you're going to have to get more creative, put some sheets up around the bed or something. Or again, or, like it's, it's dark, mm-hmm. all technology goes off and you right. start reading. Right. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with like one of the worst things I think that happened to this world were Kindles because now all of our books became digital. And so we went from a Kindle to reading books on a cell phone. Right. You know what I mean? Well, so, sure. Yeah. The Kindles themselves are not bad because it's e-ink, right? right. Instead of the L. CD but screen. It, it was like a, a, right, it was, a gateway drug. A gateway drug. To, you know what I mean? To you reading books on our on our iPads drugs. and yeah. reading books on our cell phones. Sure. So right. th- like so Kindles are fine, but right. you know what? So maybe get an e ink Kindle. Yeah. Or just it. start reading some books. Or just get some physical books and mm-hmm. candles. <laughs> learn, or learn or a, a a a a lamp, you know what I mean? Right. Like just dim it down. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be extremist. You don't No. But, but you can make improvements, but really turn your room into a sanctuary. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's dark in there. Make sure the temperature is good. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are worried about being cold when they sleep. It's okay to layer up on the bed and keep the air temperature cold. People tend to sleep best when it's 62 degrees. I don't. It's pretty chilly. Well, I don't. I don't know if you ever hit sixty-two degrees. You always have two layers of children on top of you. So, um, also not good sleep habits, guys. Well, right. So, okay, let's talk about children and pets on the bed. Um, yes, we co-sleep with our children, and we're not going to be stopping. That's Anytime just how it is. Soon. I don't necessarily have a problem with that either. There's a lot of historical and and familial benefits to having a, a family bed that way, mm-hmm. but pets on the bed. Mm, if they're interfering with your sleep, it's time to put some boundaries up. Mm. And I, I used to, this is what I used to do for a living, by the way, people, when I was in the military and even before that in my graduate program, I was doing so much insomnia work with people. Mm -hmm. So I know about the insomnia stuff. Pets are a very common problem with it Mm because they're on the bed and then they're off the bed and then they're pushing you off the bed. Mm -hmm. Um, It interferes with so much sleep. So, put the boundaries up. Your sleep is more important than their being able to sleep on the bed. They can sleep anywhere. Yep. Our dogs is sleep on the floor next to the window right now. Mm-hmm. She's doing great. So, um, other stuff that you need to get out of your room. Mm, Just don't plug things in next to your bed. Yeah. Don't plug things in next to your bed. Yeah. Just keep it dark and quiet and cool. Yeah. That's, that's really the goal. Yeah. Oh, and dark curtains guys. Dark like curtains, really dark right. curtains, especially if you have like lights. a south facing window and mm-hmm. the sun comes up at five thirty in the morning for yeah. you. Yeah. Those blackout curtains can be a, a life changer. Mm-hmm. If you need a white noise machine, I uh, get that. Right. One thing I do want to mention, uh, you guys are going to hate me. Um, so those fan white noise machines actually blow out a massive amount of EMFs. So specifically magnetic field. Mm-hmm, yes. So it like 
the magnetic field on those uh, those fans that make the white noise is ginormous. I actually have a, I think a saved story on my Instagram on, on it. So go check that out if you want, but, um, but it's not good. So don't put one of those in your room. What we actually use is an old cell phone. Mm -hmm. So you know how they have like the white noise apps. Mm -hmm. So we use a white noise app as, um, as our white noise. Yeah, instead the, of the, the cell phone now. is on airplane mode mm -hmm. and, it's and it just, charges during the day. We actually don't even use that now. We've kind we, of trained yeah, we've, ourselves off of it, but there might be some people out there that will need it. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be you to be mindful that yes, EMFs keep you awake. Don't mm -hmm. put a, like the white noise machine is taking care of one issue, but creating another. Yeah. Well, there's another potential issue with white noise as well. There's mm -hmm. some evidence that white noise actually Keeps interferes with child development. Oh, geez. I know. Right. Yeah. Um, everything we do just, is messing up our kids. Just don't but. put them near your kids' beds, guys. Like, yeah. like I can't express enough how bad they are <laughs> for you. Just again, you're yeah. probably like, what is EMF? Please go listen to that episode. It's, and go watch my EMF save story on my Facebook, yeah. on my Instagram. I mean, so but just like I tend to say, there is not one thing that's going to solve your issue. So yeah. just because you get rid of EMFs doesn't mean you're suddenly going to have beautiful sleep. I don't care right. what people say about that. It's a, it's a holistic, it is holistic. and complex and intricately woven mm -hmm. puzzle that you have to solve. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of the other pieces you need to get together. We've talked about the room environment. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the preparation. So Janique mentioned the association piece before. Mm -hmm. You can train yourself to get tired through consistency and mm -hmm. ritual. Yep. And maybe ritual isn't the word you like, so we'll call it habits. right? Yep. And that just means that you have the process you go through every night when you are getting ready for bed that sends the signal to your body and brain that, oh, we're doing the bed thing. It's mm -hmm. time for us to wind down and start getting sleepy. Mm -hmm. Right? We've not done that so well with ourselves, but we've done that really well with Tennyson. Yeah. Every night we go through a process of reading some books. We do a kind of a motivational quote of the day. Mm -hmm. We do a couple of songs and then he brushes his teeth and puts his PJs on and we go to bed. Yep. And it has done wonders for his consistency of sleep, getting him to bed at a good time, mm -hmm. how quickly he falls asleep once mm -hmm. he's in bed. It's been awesome. Yeah. So it works. We've got living proof in our own household yep. that it works. Yep. You can do the same thing for yourself. Yep. Find your ritual. Make it something that doesn't involve technology. Maybe it can be reading some of a book. It can be having some chamomile tea. Whatever Listening to like affirmations or Listening meditation. Affirmations, meditations, that's mm -hmm. fantastic, right? Yeah. And then obviously you've got your brushing your teeth process, changing into your own pajamas or whatever you right. want to bed and, and then getting into bed and doing mm -hmm. that. One thing I do also want to add to this is the kind of food that you're eating throughout the day. If you're eating mm -hmm. high sugary, mm -hmm. very stimulating power foods, how are you going to switch your brain off if all you're eating all day long is power food, yeah. refined carbs, processed carbs, yep. sugary foods, sodas? There's no way your brain is going to be like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with this. This is fine. Yep. In like, fact, you need to slow down the fuel. I'm looking at a study right now. It was published December 11th. So less than Just, a month ago, yeah, refined month. carbs were found to trigger insomnia. There you go. You know, okay. so the so, carbs alone. Mm -hmm. So eat a dinner that's really high in fats and veggies. You guys like really like get, mm -hmm. you know, people like to eat rice at night. Don't do rice. You, know, um, you just need veggies. You just need veggies and fat. So, so the and protein part of the logic behind that is that starting at about three o'clock in the morning, depending on your particular circadian rhythm, your body starts releasing sugar from glycogen, right? Your liver stores up sugar as glycogen and then it starts releasing it so that you don't get too low on blood sugar in the middle of the night because you're not eating for a while. Yeah. And and some people, they get really low on blood sugar and it actually interferes with their sleep. Mm -hmm. And so they think, well, if I have rice before bed, that can keep my blood sugar up so I sleep better. Yeah. No, 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 no. What's yeah. going to happen is you're going to eat that rice. It's going to spike your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And what follows a blood sugar spike? An insulin spike. Mm -hmm. And then that insulin is going to come in at like midnight, depending on when you ate. 
Yeah. And then you're going to get the hypoglycemia and it's going to interfere with your sleep. Yeah. And then your liver is going to release tons of glycogen and you're so going to have high working. blood sugar in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's, you're not helping anything. You're chasing symptoms and right. exacerbating the roller coaster of blood sugar. Right. So like Johnny said, eat some good fat, some good protein, preferably not too late. Yeah. I think ideally you want to stop eating by like 8, 8. PM, mm -hmm. but again, depends on when you typically go to bed. Yeah. Right. And, uh, that should prevent foods from interfering with your diet, right. Right? with your sleep. I mean, um, now as far as sleep timing goes, they say that the midpoint of your sleep should take place before four in the morning. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting eight hours of sleep, mm. then 12 to eight would be the absolute latest you could go. Yeah. Ideally though, they, they found that between people, 10 and 2, right? People reach these magical peaks of sleep efficiency at 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you'd like to be asleep by 10 p.m. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I did that. I don't either. Um, sounds lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but sure at least is. by 2 a.m., right? Um, but but timing-wise, if you're trying to set yourself up for perfect sleep, you mm -hmm. should probably aim to be falling asleep before 10 PM. Yeah. I want to go back to your, um, the whole insulin spiking thing. Sure. I remember when we were checking your, uh, your blood glucose in the uh, mornings yeah. and your, your fasting glucose mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and the nights that you went to bed late, mm -hmm. like 1 AM, 2 AM, mm -hmm. your sugar was like your, your blood higher. sugar was really high yeah. those mornings. And we we're like, Oh my gosh. So that's what sleeplessness and stress does to you is yep. it spikes your blood sugar. And guess what? Blood sugar, like sugar in your blood is very inflammatory. Oh, so going to bed late is a direct correlation with inflammation. So if you're trying to heal up again, autoimmune issues, inflammatory issues, you need to go to bed early so that you're not exacerbating that with sleeplessness and late nights. Right. And, and people, I was doing keto at the time. Right? Yes. So for me to have high blood sugar at any point of the day mm -hmm. was frustrating for me. Tristan, but that just shows you how strong that stress factor and that sleep factor is. Tristan is possibly the healthiest eater you will ever come by. Like one of the healthiest eaters mm -hmm. but just because of his health history. Like mm -hmm. he doesn't risk anything. Right. And so for, for him to have a sugar spike in the morning, that was really like, and it's interesting because our hair analysis, shout out for the hair analysis. Mm. When we, when we did it on him, it kept saying blood sugar mm. regulation. And I was like, are you kidding me? This man eats beautifully. Well, I was vegan at the time. Yeah. And so. he was vegan at the time, mm. but still like <laughs> it should have been controlled. Right. Right. But so we, that. we weren't expecting that. So when we were starting to measure and I was like, oh my gosh, it's the sleeplessness. Right. It's the stress. So like, if, if I remember stress right, stress on his body, my consistent top three tends to be blood sugar, sleep, and emotions. And emotions. <laughs> so there I you wonder go. why. Mm. Do you have stress? Do I? <laughs> um, so, so anyway, um, so that's how the food piece fits in with sleep. Um, what else do we need to cover with sleep? We need to talk about consistency. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is one that I'm really, really bad at. One night I'll get a really good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. And then I feel good. So the next day I stay up super late right. being productive mm -hmm. and then I crash the next crash. day, but I get a good night's sleep yeah. and it, that seesaw is not healthy. Yeah. I know that's not healthy and I know I'm not the only one doing that. Yeah. If you really want to benefit from good sleep, you need to do it consistently for a long period of time. So let's say you, you're listening to this podcast and you're like, okay, I'm going to implement all these things. And a week goes by and you're like, nothing. Mm -hmm. I am still not sleeping. You got to give this a few months, guys. Like I know like that's really tedious and you have to wait a really long time, but think of how long you've had these sleep issues for mm -hmm. years. Right. You're not going to clean up years worth of sleep damage. Right in a week, no. in two weeks. Like mm -hmm. you literally have to reprogram mm -hmm. everything. Now we know a lot about the regeneration cycle of your gut. Mm -hmm. It's three days. It's really fast. Mm -hmm. We know the regeneration cycle of the cells of your skin. Mm -hmm. It's 30 days. Mm -hmm. All right. We know the regeneration cycle of red blood cells. It's three months. Mm -hmm. When it comes to healing hormones, you need at least three months to start seeing the shifting of your hormones. Yep. When it comes to healing your brain, guys, we're looking at like 
a three month window. Yeah, at so, least, yeah. so if you're trying to heal your brain, you got to give it at least three months of That's consistency. Consistency, mm-hmm. right? And that might sound impossible, but if you prioritize it, it's not impossible. Exactly. If, it's like this is a lifestyle shift that you're going to have to implement every single day. If you are really serious about getting past these health issues that you have yeah. and finally moving forward, if you're doing all the other stuff mm-hmm. and you're just not making progress, yeah, maybe it's time Maybe yeah. it's time to put yourself through a sleep boot camp. Mm-hmm. It, because get this, you guys, sleeplessness breeds more sleeplessness. Yep. Always. Right. It always will because your body will go into a stress response. And right. it's like, oh, we're still running from a bear. I can do this until you crash. Right. Remember, chronic sleep deprivation leads to anxiety. Mm-hmm. Anxiety leads to insomnia. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's- you will get yourself into a death spiral mm-hmm. so fast. Yeah. Um, and then you're not sleeping, right. period. So when you are attempting to rehabilitate your sleep, you've got to account for the environment. You've got to account for the foods you eat. You've got to account for the timing and the associations with your bed. You also have to check in on your physiology because snoring and apnea are mm. very, very common causes of sleep deprivation. Yeah. Even people who are in bed and sleeping for eight, nine, 10 hours a night yeah. could still be sleep deprived if they have apnea. Because yeah. what apnea is, is it's basically a cessation of your breathing. You stop breathing for yeah. brief periods of time and your brain has to wake you up in order to kick the breathing process back in again. Right. And that can happen like 70 times a an hour in some people. I almost said seven times a minute. That would not happen. Um, And if if that is happening, your brain is never having a chance to get into deep sleep or REM sleep. So you are essentially sleep deprived. You might as well be an insomniac and you're going to feel it. So if you do have really poor sleep, let's say you are in bed for 10 hours, you wake up and you still feel like you could sleep for 10 more hours. Mm -hmm. And that happens to you on a regular basis pretty good chance that apnea is involved. You need to see a specialist get tested for that. Or buy an EWAP machine. Well, that, That I mean, you're starting to talk about resolving the issue, but I'm talking about diagnosing the issue in the first place, right? You need to know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. There are solutions to this. There's exercising with oxygen that, that tends to really be helpful. Mm -hmm. They have CPAP machines. People dread the CPAP machines. It's just like any other change to your sleep environment. There's an adjustment period and Mm -hmm. it feels weird at first, but you get used to it. And if doing that machine means that you're going to get high quality sleep going forward, do the dang machine. Totally. Just do it. Yeah. Bite the bullet and, and go through that boot camp to get there because it is totally worth it. In the meantime, look at your carbs, Mm -hmm. look at your weight, Look at your exercise, inflammation, all of that stuff. All of it. Start addressing it. Then maybe you won't need the CPAP machine much longer. By the way, CPAP machines, you like wear a mask and it pushes air in so that you don't stop breathing. Right, Right, exactly. Okay. Um, So where do we go from here? All right. So we've covered environment. We've covered Mm -hmm. apnea and snoring. By the way, snoring can cause problems even if it's not leading to apnea because it's loud. I have shared rooms with snorers in the past and it is hell. I, I'm not that snorer. No, no, no. Jenny doesn't. You. No. Oh, have you ever heard me snore? We would not be married anymore. I don't, I don't think I, I couldn't handle it. I don't snore period. No, she doesn't. Jenny doesn't snore. Like even when I'm sick, I don't snore. Our children snore more than either of us do. <laughs> That's actually. True, actually. Um, we should probably get that checked. We will. We will. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I'm waiting till they're 10 to do something about it. But, but snoring is absolutely awful for couples for people that sleep in the same bed. If you are a snorer, you might be sleeping great. Your partner is probably yeah, suffering awesome. from it. If you both snore, you're both suffering. Yeah. So here's the deal. If you snore, figure out why, once again, there mm-hmm. could be something going on there that yeah. needs to be addressed, but you might consider sleeping in different rooms. Yes. Okay. So how many of you are freaking out right now because we said that? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's not because you guys don't love each other less. No. Sleeping in different beds has nothing to do with how much you like each other. In fact, 
it could be the most romantic and kind thing <laughs> you ever do to each other. Right. Because it could mean that you get good sleep for the first time since you got married. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Exactly. Right. I actually offered to sleep in a different room with the kids so that Tristan could get yeah. good sleep because we don't have snoring issues. We have children climbing in our bed and making demands issues. Right. So, so don't you say how much I love you no, that I, I offered to sleep you, upstairs? You love me so much. The, I know. With the children and I have know. them keep me up I, versus both of us. I though. would offer the same if it would make a lick of a difference. Yeah, <laughs> I know. They would just scream. Yes. But okay. So People are like, okay, well, what can I do between now and healing my brain? What can, like, let's start talking about supplements that can okay. help people sleep because the right. number one thing that I would recommend is CBD. Yeah. So, so once again, we've talked about CBD in the past. It is not a cure, it's not. right? It will not address the underlying issues, but it will certainly help to address the symptoms mm -hmm. that cause other problems. So in this right. case, it's perfect. We have so many people that use CBD to help them sleep and it yeah. works so well for so many of them. Yep. It doesn't work for everybody. No. It doesn't work all the time for everybody, mm -hmm. but it does work a lot of the time for a lot of people. So yeah. it's absolutely worth checking out. The way it works is that it acts as a cellular thermostat or a, a neuronal mm -hmm. thermostat and helps to bring down the excitement level yeah. of the cells. So, so excitement that level body, meaning like wiredness, mm -hmm. like you're super wired. Mm -hmm. It tones that down a it, ton. Yeah. It calms you down so that you can actually get sleep. some sleep. Mm -hmm. It's very, very powerful that way. Does Kratom do that? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe not. So, so Kratom for the people out there, it's a plant basically, and it's typically powdered. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, dried processed powdered. And then, it has a very relaxing effect mm -hmm. is also an analgesic. So it, it, it's a really potent, it acts analgesic. on our opioid receptors, but it's not an opioid. It works right. differently from them. Mm -hmm. so, they actually use this stuff to help opioid addicts get mm -hmm. off of opioids. Like right. that's how amazing it is. If you want more information on it, there's actually a Netflix documentary called leaf of faith. Right. Kratom right now is a very controversial topic. It's, Kratom it's is illegal the new, in a bunch of states. Yeah, actually. Kratom is the new CBD. Like Kratom is what CBD was like four years ago or three years ago. Yeah. That's, that's probably fair. So mm -hmm. big it, pharma is trying to dip its fingers into the Kratom pot right now yeah. because they don't like, how much money Kratom is stealing from their opioid sales. So right. did I just say that? You did. I did. Uh, now we're on a list. Darn it. Again. <laughs> Again. Right. So, so anyway, so leaf of faith on Netflix is fantastic, but right. Um, so, so as but, far as whether Kratom helps with sleep, a lot of people report that yes, in fact it does, mm -hmm. but I've also had people report that Kratom is a little bit um, energizing. Mm hmm and it prevents them from sleeping well. Mm -hmm. I've had experiences myself with Kratom where it prevented me from sleeping well. Mm -hmm. So I would not recommend using it for sleep. Okay. Um, you're, but you're, you're welcome, welcome to, to experiment. Yeah, you're welcome to experiment. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't put it on like definitely try list. Yeah. It's a maybe if you want to try list, if especially you, if you have pain. Yeah. So if you're trying to figure out how to buy Kratom, it's actually really hard to buy. Yeah. Go to my Instagram account, click on my link in bio. There is a, there's actually an affiliate link there um, just because Kratom is really hard to get. So um, everyone kept asking, are you going to sell it in your shop? We were like, heck no, because the government's still investigating us. So once they're done with that, we might consider selling Kratom, but for now we're not. But that is a way that you can get Kratom. But okay, so CBD is a really good thing to help you with sleep. Mm -hmm. Inositol is one of my favorite things. So inositol right. um, is very anti-inflammatory. It works on the brain. Um, it That's actually what I took when, because CBD wasn't a thing when I had Graves disease. So I was taking right. inositol to help me sleep. Yeah, inositol is a, a B vitamin, it's mm -hmm. B8. Mm -hmm. And it, is, it has a very calming effect. Yeah. So awesome one. Most of the B vitamins work, um, work towards uh, tissues that regenerate really fast as well as the nervous system. And so that's why inositol is just so incredible. When yeah, it comes I, to I think system. it interacts with your serotonin somehow. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the actual chemical pathways that go into that. Right. But 
Magnesium is another one. Mm-hmm. So magne- so make sure you are getting um, the one specific for brain function. There is a magnesium that you will not find in most store-bought magnesiums. What kind is that? Because normally you'll have magnesium bound to something. So it's like magnesium citrate, magnesium oxalate, magnesium whatever. Yeah. So there, there are a few that actually can cross the blood brain barrier. Mm-hmm. Um, but a uh, big, big one. Well, they're glycinate. Is that the one you're thinking of? No, it's malate. Is it malate? Three and eight. Three and eight. It's the three and eight. Okay. So there's a few. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's also though the amino acid chelates that like they, for instance, Nutrigold makes one that it's bound to rice protein. Mm -hmm. And so all of the different amino amino acids acids found in rice are bound to the magnesium Mm -hmm. and they're going to absorb in all different parts of the body, which makes it fantastic for lots of purposes. But, but yeah, it can be particularly helpful for sleep. Mm -hmm. Here's what's funny though. Uh, magnesium citrate does not cross the blood brain barrier. And that's probably, probably like 50% of what the, magnesium, it's like the cheapest kind. The majority of and, magnesium products out there are magnesium mm, citrate. citrate or mm-hmm. oxide, which also doesn't work that way. And, and so they promote it as a sleep helper. Mm-hmm. In which fact, blows my mind. You've probably heard or taken calm. Mm-hmm. They call it calm and it's magnesium citrate. And it, so you guys, fun fact, I actually buy calm as, um, a diuretic for my kids. So when Satori is constipated, I give her calm and it's the most like laxative effect on her body right. because it's a citrate. Like it's not my favorite. It's really cheap. It's yeah. not very Again, well absorbed not, unless you want to poop. Not a cure, but it gets the job done because not pooping has problems. Yeah, that exactly. Come with it. So, yep. So, so magnesium is really helpful to help you sleep. So CBD, magnesium, inositol. Um, there are some kava, or ca- kava can be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's some herbs that are really great. Yeah. I have also found that supporting your adrenal function. So there is a product by standard process called Drenamin. And then I like the adrenal tonic as well from many herb. Mm-hmm. Uh, both can be found on our website, probohealth.com forward slash store. I wouldn't try to use adrenal tonic for sleep though. So that's I, more of a stimulator. Okay, so more like Drenamin. Drenamin. Yeah. Drenamin's going to support adrenal Mm -hmm. function so that you're not pumping out as much cortisol basically. So it just Mm -hmm. helps to calm your nervous system. If you are in like hyperdrive, you know, where what literally happens when you're so stressed is your adrenals will actually hijack from your sex hormones like progesterone. So it'll take progesterone and it will convert it into cortisol and then flood your body with cortisol. So not only are you having hormonal imbalances, but you're stressed out of your mind and now you're not sleeping and now you're, not healing and repairing and you're more inflamed and you're more sick. Yeah. And another herb I really love for sleep is valerian root. Mm-hmm. That is just awesome for calming you down and just getting you into a nice chill state. Yeah. Um, Medi herb makes a valerian complex. So mm-hmm. it's got some other really great chilling herbs that are fantastic that right, way. Right. Right. And you and so just a quick shout out to Medi Herb and Standard Process. Like the reason why we talk about Medi Herb, Standard Process, and Nutrigold so much is because they are just really, really well produced products that are really high potency. Um, they're food based, plant based. Mm-hmm. Um, they are to us. We have come across tons and tons of companies, and we have reps from companies come to us weekly, daily mm-hmm. even. And we have vetted these to be like the cream of the crop. Yeah. There are very few products that we consider to be up there mm-hmm. with standard process and many herb. Nutrigold is one. Yeah. I mentioned um, that. We, we like what they have, but uh, red remedies is one that some of their products are also yeah. very impressive to me. That's true. They have a thyroid strong that mm-hmm. I've just fallen in love with recently. Really? So. <laughs> like a trader to standard process, but oh, no. it's one product that has like everything I like for mm-hmm. thyroid. So right. it's just a great one. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, you know, this, one of the things you have to take into account when it comes to sleep issues is that there could be a system that's out of balance. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the thyroid, right? Yeah. If you've got thyroid issues that can interfere with your sleep. So like Graves disease. So in that case, something like iodine or selenium mm-hmm. might be what helps you figure it out. But you're not going to really know that until you really start doing some good self-assessment or testing right. to help you figure out what's going on. Right. 
you might have an HPA axis issue and it could be your hypothalamus or your pituitary. That's Mm -hmm. sort of the, the first domino that's causing the issues. Yeah. But, uh, that, that gets a little bit more complicated. So the first thing you want to do though, is figure out your sleep hygiene. Yeah. Right. Get that room figured out, get your daily schedule worked out, get your nutrition locked in. Right. If you're still having sleep issues at that point, it might be time to work with a professional. Yeah. Um, there are behavioral things that you can do that are a little bit more, what's the word regimented. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole program called CBTI and it's designed to solve insomnia. I used it a ton and it is very, very effective, but it is kind of hell. Why? Because you have to basically deprive yourself of sleep in order to teach yourself to sleep. Oh, that sounds awful. So what happens is first you, you do measuring, right? You have to do a sleep journal. Do you have to go to a psychologist to like to, coach to you do it? This? There's an app. You can get an app, CBTI app. It's meant to be used with a coach, but honestly, like the app could help you figure out the whole thing. Gotcha. But, but the idea is first you track your sleep for a while. And by the way, this aura ring I've got does an amazing job of that. Mm -hmm. What I love about these rings is that you can put them in airplane mode. So they're not emitting the EMFs while you wear them. That was actually a conversation we had when Mm -hmm. he wanted to buy it. I'm like, but what about the EMFs? So yeah, we had to look into it. Yeah. turns out not a problem. So I can wear it. It tracks data without sending out signals. And then in the morning when I put it on the charger, it turns on, it syncs up with my phone and then I can see what happened. But anyway, however you do it, track your sleep and it'll tell you kind of the quality of your sleep. What we really want to know is how much of time you're in bed versus how much of the time you're actually sleeping. Mm -hmm. And if we have what we call sleep efficiency of less than like 85%, we've got a problem, right? And that's where we need to fix things. So then we know how long you're actually asleep. Let's say it's six hours. We restrict the amount of time you're in bed to six hours, Mm -hmm. right? So uh, let's say that your wake up time every morning is 6 a.m. That means you keep yourself up until 12 12. and then you get in bed and you wake up at six, no matter what kind of sleep quality you have and you keep tracking, right? All right. And as soon as your sleep efficiency gets back up to 90 plus percent, yeah. Then we can start expanding the sleep window out. So we might do like 11 to six. Interesting. And as long as we maintain our sleep efficiency, we can keep expanding until we're getting you the full seven to nine hours that your body needs. And it, you said this is really effective. Oh, it's super effective, but it's really hard. Compliance mm-hmm. is not good because people don't want to follow the rules. They don't want to stay up Yeah. because a lot of these guys that I worked with in the military, yeah, they were getting like, four to five hours of actual sleep every night, yeah. which meant that we had to cut their window down to four yeah. or five hours. Yeah. And even though they have insomnia, they're not sleeping that much anyway. Right. The idea of keeping themselves out of bed was torture. Yeah. Right. Plus if you're awake for 15 minutes and you haven't fallen asleep, you have to get out of bed. Yeah. Even if it's two 30 in the morning and you are just praying for sleep, right. You have to get yourself out of bed and go do something else. Read a book, do dishes. That's something, hard. Some, it, that sounds terrible. It's mentally very challenging. Yeah. But it works. Interesting. Right. Um, and and that's why it's helpful to work with a coach on it or yeah. a psychologist, therapist of some kind, because they help you stay accountable. Right. They help you work through the frustrations and difficulties of getting past those desires to gotcha. give in. Right. Yeah. You also can't nap while you're doing it. That's a lot of people so with insomnia, they try to make up for the last sleep by napping in the middle of the day. We have kind of two parts of the day where we're most tired, 2 PM, 2 AM. Yeah. So that 2 PM time is so tempting. So tempting. It's the, the mistress that wants you to <laughs> crawl into bed with her literally. Oh my God. <laughs> and, um, and you, you can't, can't give in. Right. Right. You yeah. have to say no to that. So, but if you can successfully implement this program, you literally retrain your body's sleep cycle and that's great. And long-term it's magical for you. That's so great. So it's worth every moment of frustration. So if you've tried everything and you still can't sleep, then this is a, this is a, yeah, an option for you. Absolutely. And if that's still not working for you, 
yeah. then you need to really start looking into testing for other things yeah. like HPA dysfunction or mm-hmm. thyroid issues or what you know. I would recommend to people is just start with the basics, get good nutrition. I can't tell oh, yeah. you how many people have started our membership program and they're like, I sleep better now. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because you're actually getting the right chemistry and chemicals in your brain you're not for having- it to like rest and heal versus be on fire all the time. You're not doing your midnight bowl of ice cream before right. you get into bed. Well, and you want that bowl of ice cream because when you feel there, there's a very real part of your body that's like, I am still starving. All mm-hmm. you fed me is sugar and carbs. Right. I need some vitamins. I need some minerals. And so you start craving foods, mm-hmm. but all you have in your house is like you said, that bowl of ice cream. Right. So, um, so giving yourself high, a highly nutritious diet, getting rid of those refined sugars, especially juices. Don't drink juice. Don't drink carbonation. None of that. You, you guys just get it gone. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of really good healthy fats, mm-hmm. um, good proteins, lots and lots of veggies, you guys, tons yeah. and tons of it. And you will feel so much better. Speaking of that, collagen is an awesome sleep aid. Yeah. Because so- it helps balance out the glutamate in mm-hmm. your brain. Glutamate is excitatory, right? It's amino acid, well, glutamine, and and it has its purpose, but when you get too much of it, it becomes neuro excitatory, which means your brain's really wired and you can't sleep. Collagen is full of all kinds of things that help to balance that out. It helps to bring up your, your glycine levels, mm-hmm. to balance that out, your GABA levels. Yeah. And that can help you to sleep more. Yeah. So awesome. You collagen. can also take GABA too. GABA can, is very You calming. can also take GABA. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of things, it's unpredictable what it's actually going to do in your body, yeah, but true. it's certainly worth a shot. So, so there you go, guys. We, I, is there anything else? Any other no, the, sleep aids? The last thing I would want to say is that let's say that you really haven't noticed a lot of issues with your sleep. You don't get that much, but you don't really think it's a problem, but you have other goals that you're having a hard time reaching. Like let's say that your, your gym performance isn't where mm-hmm. you want it to be. And you just feel like it's not improving at all. Right. Sleep might be the missing piece. Right. When, when you talk to like the professional bodybuilders, the ones that do it naturally, and, and you talk to them about what it takes to really gain muscle and bulk up, mm-hmm. almost always they will mention getting tons sleep. of sleep yeah. as being super important to it. Because 80% of healing and repair happens when you're sleeping. Your, your body will not go into an anabolic building state Mm-mm. when it's sleep deprived. Exactly. It just won't have the resources. So if you are trying to aggressively heal yourself, if you have health issues, um, let's look at your sleep guys. Let's look at your stress. Let's create some healthy sleep patterns, rituals, habits, all of that. Like I said in the beginning, when the sun goes down, keep the lights low, Mm -hmm. you know, yellow to reddish lighting, not this bright fluorescent lighting. That's just going to keep you wired and tired all day long. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and EMFs, as I mentioned, you know, let's, let's really look at that and see if we can create some boundaries with that. Yeah. EMF that. Yeah. (laughs) What? (laughs) <laughs> no that was cute thank was you really cute. okay <laughs> that came out of nowhere <laughs> that's like, what we should have called the emf that. episode you love that? <laughs> yeah. that's hilarious um uh, and so you guys so yeah i hopefully this was really helpful i mean again tristan's just such a well of knowledge oh, well, you're so wise you. babe <laughs> if um, i was wise i would be asleep right now it's now, i know oh my gosh it's 1208 Don't- don't remind We're me. up past midnight We're, and I'm officially a terrible person. We're so. going to bed now. Good night, everybody. So we hope you enjoyed that. Please leave us a review if you have a second. Oh, yeah. That really helps us Please. get get around. <laughs> and uh, and we and we just love it. We love reading your guys' reviews. Um, so thanks again for listening. Thanks for being along with us on this journey. Fun fact, you guys probably aren't gonna listen to this podcast until like weeks later, but we hit 
top 50 on alternative health in the United States. Thank you. This is all thanks to you. You are awesome. We are so appreciative and still a little bit shocked that anyone cares what we have to say, (laughs) but thank you. Thank you guys. You're so so nice. Like it's just been wonderful. Like this has been really fun. We've been talking about this podcast forever and for this to like happen within like six months, that's, that's because of you. So thanks for listening. Thanks for always subscribing, downloading, sharing with your friends, like sharing the love, like, we appreciate you so much and we hope and we we look forward to constantly providing you guys empowering information. That's so. right. And even if even if we didn't give you any of that and this was really boring, you can use it to help you fall asleep. So, uh, <laughs> see that? There you go. Two services. You're welcome. We win no matter what. We, <laughs> we do. All right. Thanks guys. Until next time. Good night. Good night guys.